We have uh, Elena Hildebrand, uh, Russell, uh, wait, Elena Hildebrand, <laughs> sorry, uh, Russell White and Whitney Hansen. So we'll go in that order. So Elena will be up first. Um, her paper is The Human Rights Crisis in Persons with Disabilities. Elena? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Elena Hildebrand. I'm a sophomore here at Drake University studying international relations and economics. And I decided to do my project on the human rights crisis of people with disabilities because I am really passionate about improving the lives of people who aren't really the loudest in our communities. And I definitely feel like people with disabilities don't have a huge say in a lot of the policies that are created revolving around their lives and don't have a lot of say in the public sphere. So I want to kind of bring about this topic so more people know about the major issue that exists today. Now first, I want you to think of someone you know that has a disability. Maybe it's a physical disability, a mental, or learning one. Everyone can probably think of at least one person, right? Now, that shouldn't be surprising because 15% of our population around the world has some form of disability. That's a billion people around the world. Based on that number alone, the human rights crises should be one of, if not the largest human rights crisis in the entire world. And a lot of the time, we don't talk about it. So the main reason I focus on this project is because it affects so many people and we hardly ever hear about it. So first, I just want to provide a quick introduction on people with disabilities around the, around the world, actually. First off, definitions vary from country to country and also individual person to a different individual person. They can get really, really difficult to find statistics that are reliable and have the same definitions across the board. However, the World Health Organization defines people with disabilities as anyone that has any difficulty based on their physical or mental capacity, which includes the vast majority of disabilities around the world, even when many countries, especially in the developing world, don't always consider those disabilities as actual disabilities. So that makes it very difficult for people around the globe to make policies that actually include the vast majority of people with disabilities. Second, as I stated, it is 15% of the population around the globe, which is a huge number of people that I don't think we actually think about quite often. Um, there's also disproportionate effects around the world. Specifically, the vast majority of people with disabilities are from the developing world. So maybe it's not 15% of people in the United States, but around the globe, it certainly is. And so because of those disproportionate effects, I think, especially in the United States, we don't focus on those disabilities in other countries, which we absolutely need to, as well as those who live here in the US. Furthermore, half of people with disabilities around the globe cannot afford health care. Meanwhile, only a third of those who do not have disabilities cannot afford it. So it's a significant increase, and with the need for healthcare, especially for those with physical disabilities, is incredibly high. And that they can't afford it, nor is it being offered, is a major issue as well. Uh, far fewer attend schools around the globe. In the United States, the number of people with disabilities that don't have a high school diploma is double that number than those who don't have disabilities in the US. In Sub-Saharan Africa, more, around 90% of students don't attend school if they have a disability. And that is a huge number of students that aren't being seen or going to school. In other developing countries, it generally spans from about around 60% of people with disabilities do not attend school. Um, finally, access accessibility issues affect each and every country, including the United States. Here at Drake, just for example, Morehouse Residence Home, people with disabilities cannot get inside, physical disabilities. There is not an elevator there. The only ramp that exists to get into that building is locked at all times and this is considered an emergency exit. So therefore, just one example here in Des Moines, Iowa, the people can't uh, access their school. And that happens to each and every country. So here are some major barriers to equality that exist around the world. First, as we talked about, accessibility and discrimination happens in every form, in employment, in education. Um, and that happens, again, in every single country. It's a major issue in the United States as well especially that we don't see a vast number of people who have disabilities in media. As 1% of people that are played in the media have disabilities, and 95% of those are played by actors who do not have a disability. Therefore, we're not seeing the number of people who actually have disabilities on TV or in movies, but the people that play them are, do not actually have disabilities, therefore making it very difficult to actually see those effects in real time. Furthermore, there's a lot of legislation that makes it difficult to access a great number of uh, issues, specifically in the United States. The Fair Labor Standards Act, which was passed in 1968, um, allows employers to request from the government or from the 
labor organization to pay people with disabilities less money below the minimum wage. Specifically, in my paper, I talk about Shayla Leland, who told her local Oklahoma newspaper that she had to quit her job at Goodwill when they docked her pay to $4.50 an hour. She could not live off of that wage, but that is legal under the U.S. Fair, Sta Fair Labor Standards Act. And this was probably the most surprising evidence that I found throughout my research. I couldn't believe that this was legal and people weren't talking about it in the United States at all whatsoever, but it happens all the time. Major organizations like Goodwill that employ people with disabilities do not have to pay them the same amount of money that people without disabilities have. Another example of legislation that makes it difficult to survive a someone with a disability is in Croatia. Only recently did they decide to repeal their legislation that forces those who have any form of disability into an institution. So this had happened for more than 30 years in Croatia, and no one did anything about it. They were forced into institutions that they may or may not have wanted to be in. Only 30% of people who were in institutions wanted to be there and had um, personally placed themselves in those institutions. Meanwhile, the remaining 70% were placed there forcefully, but largely by the government. It is now being repealed, so we can see some of those benefits and people turning to the major issues that have been created. Furthermore, as I spoke about, um, education is a major issue, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, with 90% of students not attending school. In South Africa, for example, since 2015, 500,000 students of elementary school age have been locked out of going to school each and every day largely by the government. They have very limited accessibility in that country, and the government is not making a concerted effort to make sure those students with disabilities do attend school. Again, even in the United States, there are limited opportunities to go to school and significantly lower graduation rates. A big impact of this is when you don't have education, you do not have better jobs, therefore creating a cycle of poverty that exists within people who have disabilities around the world. For example, in the United States, the people under the poverty line without disabilities is around 12%. Meanwhile, those with disabilities, it's around 30%, which is significantly higher and a real problem we need to address if we're ever going to focus and support on equality for those with disabilities. Um, next, we have employment and income. In the United States, 65% of people who have disabilities are unemployed. Again, it's very difficult to find a lot of statistics that focus on the entire board as there are many definitions and a lot of countries don't focus on those people with disabilities, making it difficult to really characterize how many people are employed and are not employed. However, in Latin America and the Caribbean, that number of unemployment is right around 80 to 90 percent as well, either unemployed or outside the workforce, um, largely not by choice. And so that is also a major issue. They're not contributing to the economy and, again, being stuck in the cycle of poverty. And then again, in the United States, um, people with disabilities earn 64 cents for every dollar their non-disabled partners make. And that's a significant difference that's all been controlled for gender and race as well, which is a significant harm as well. This also comes back to the U.S. Fair Labor Standards Act that allows businesses to not pay them as much as those who do not have disabilities. And finally, as I talked about throughout my presentation, the lack of information and data and statistics make it incredibly difficult to really understand and characterize the major issue both at home and abroad. So why should we care about this issue? First off, it is clearly one of the largest humanitarian crises today. At 15% of the population, that is a huge number. And it affects millions of people, a billion people actually, around the world. Um, another big issue of dis disability is the cycle of disability. In nations, especially developing countries, they have more people with disabilities. This largely comes because they do not have enough water, they do not have enough food, and with that, when children do not have enough of the resources they need, within the first 1,000 days, they are generally what is called stunted, which means they will never be of average size to the normal person the rest of their lives. This creates significant disability in developing nations and will only continue in the future with such limited resources. And so as this continues, it creates a cycle of poverty along with that, and a cycle of discrimination when we do not bring them into our society. Furthermore, there is a growing population of people with disabilities. Again, with this stunting, a great deal of violence and civil wars um, around the world has also created a number of people with disabilities as well. And it's only projected to increase further in the future, especially in developing nations that need a great deal of foreign aid as well. 
So finally, looking at possible solutions for these issues. The first one is more data and greater visibility. So specifically because it was so difficult to find so many statistics that really covered the entire board, not just by a couple countries that focus on it, we need to make sure we're increasing the amount of data and statistics that are available so we understand how, this, how these disabilities affect people around the globe. Furthermore, greater visibility is incredibly important. When less than 1% of the characters on TV and in the media have disabilities, we don't see them as much as we should. When 15% of the population really is affected by this issue. So by increasing that visibility, more people will understand the difficulties that people with disabilities have, and also be able to further Im improve their um, accessibility throughout the world. Um, government action can focus on the accessibility issues and discrimination that people with disabilities face each and every day. In a number of countries, they do not focus on this major issue, therefore making it difficult for them to be employed and go to school. So as the government needs to focus on this group of people, it will only better their um, access in the future as well. Further, investing in a number of programs, specifically UNICEF does a great deal of work in Sub-Saharan Africa with uh, people with disabilities, and so investing in those kind of programs that focus on people with disabilities will improve their livelihoods as a whole and bring them more into society so they're more uh, visible. Um, legislation definitely is a huge issue as with the U.S. Fair Labor Standards Act. A part of my, this project was to do um, a service-based kind of component along with it. So I wrote to my local legislators here in Iowa to repeal the U.S. or at least revise the U.S. Fair Labor Standards Act as paying people with disabilities is inherent discrimination that our government has allowed to happen for the last 40 years. So improving that legislation and really knowing what legislation exists is entirely important uh, to improving these programs in the future. And finally, staff education and training is also necessary to prevent any discrimination that happens in the workplace or in different schools anywhere in the world. And so focusing on investing in those programs as well will decrease the level of discrimination that exists and also allow for more accessibility and equality everywhere. Thank you. If you have any questions. Yes, let's take a, a few minutes for questions. Um, it catches my attention that in your barriers there are no cultural factors cited. Uh, having lived in countries myself where the disabled are actively hidden from public view or um, people pretend they don't exist. Um, and I wonder if you could relate those factors to some of your possible solutions. Absolutely. So a big, that was a big part of the research that I saw and I wanted to focus on kind of the broader issues and focus on those issues because cultural issues I think need to be addressed at a country level and even a local level at each and every circumstance, so finding a solution for each and every one was very difficult, but that absolutely affects the vast majority of countries, especially those that are found in developing nations. A lot of the time, parents will even hide their children and keep them at home instead of bringing them to school. And so by kind of trying to counteract that misconception of people with disabilities, especially children, is incredibly important, but again, needs to be done at the local level, hopefully through local non-government organizations or even through government programming that kind of gets rid of that belief that they shouldn't be allowed into society. I want to know what the legislators said to you. I didn't hear back from any of them. I wrote a letter to let's see all of the so I, Joni Grassley King. Um, I'm blanking on their names now. Losak, and Young. Mm -hmm. I wrote them to all of our state legislators. So and I didn't hear back from any of them. That was in November. So I mean, maybe they were having more focuses on the current election and that kind of thing. So I didn't hear back from any of them, though. Maybe That's I'll call them sometime. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elena. Thank you. Thank you.